American drone strikes have been a hallmark of the Obama administration's national security policy. With major operations in Pakistan, and now in Yemen and several other countries, the U.S. is capable of tracking, targeting, and killing people officials believe to be terrorists by the push of a button at CIA and Air Force facilities. The U.S. government does not acknowledge the CIA's use of drones anywhere in the world. All information on the CIA's drone program comes from media reporting. As a result, when Anwar al-Awlaki, a leader of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, was killed on September 30th, only unofficial accounts reported he was killed by a CIA drone strike in Yemen. However, the U.S. government has not released much information about the killing. President Obama praised the mission and defined the importance of the event. A major blow to al-Qaeda's most active operational affiliate. But al-Awlaki was an American citizen, so this killing in particular has some civil libertarians worried. Nathan Wessler, a National Security Fellow at the American Civil Liberties Union's National Office in New York, believes that the killing of al-Awlaki sets a troubling precedent. There's certainly a danger that, that anybody who the, the government decides is a terrorist or is, is threatening um, citizenship status notwithstanding, um, they can be ordered killed anywhere in the world. Al-Awlaki's American citizenship provided him certain protections under the U.S. Constitution. Specifically, Wessler believes al-Awlaki's Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights were violated. Use of excessive force, lethal force, um, when it's not justified, uh, and killing somebody without due process of law, without allowing access to the courts. Without more evidence, Wessler argues it is hard for the public to assess whether the government is acting legally. And the government also has not released the factual bases um, for ordering the killing and then ultimately um, sending the drone strike. Um, so we don't know what kind of activities the government alleges he was involved in. Um, we don't have any of the, the basis that we would have if the government had, had say, gone to court and tried to get a, a criminal indictment. In addition to evidence, the administration is withholding its internal memoranda legally justifying the killing of al-Awlaki. President Obama has promised to make the White House more transparent. In January of 2009, he directed the heads of executive departments and agencies to increase transparency in government according to a public memorandum. One of the administration's first acts was to release memos that the Bush administration had written justifying the use of torture. Now, almost three years into his first term, President Obama appears to not have relinquished much of the executive power asserted by the Bush administration. Wessler sees strong parallels between the two administrations. And any time the, the presidency and the administration claims the unilateral authority uh, to take you know, drastic actions like killing U.S. citizens or like using torture and other cruel um, and human uh, and, and otherwise punishing treatment, uh, it's cause for for serious concern, um, and the public deserves to have all the information it needs to assess whether uh, whether the president is acting within the law um, and whether the rights of Americans and others are being protected. For now, the ACLU is in court again to get information on al Awlaki's killing. The organization has filed a petition under the Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA, requesting the government release the evidence against al Awlaki and its legal basis for killing him. Wessler says the ACLU has tried this strategy before. It filed its first FOIA request over a year ago, asking to see the government's evidence against Al-Awlaki without much success. We've really received very little uh, of value from that first one, um, and it's too soon to see what we'll receive from the second. If the ACLU is able to compel the government to release the information related to Al-Awlaki's killing, the American public will be able to assess the merits of the government's action. Otherwise, it appears the public will remain in the dark. For War News Radio, I'm Sam Hirschman.